Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, My Physical World. Uh, on flightsim.to, uh, my username is Areographer. Uh, it's a Mars thing. That's basically what you see on my wallpaper. But anyway, I digress. I am, I've been asked to do some tutorial videos on getting scenery into Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, and uh, specifically talking about the different applications that I use or what a lot of creators use and are do they cost are they free whatever uh, every application that I use for creating scenery for flight simulator is open source it's free the only product that I have to buy obviously is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 itself um, and most of you know the different costs of different levels okay but I'm gonna this part one of this series today I'm gonna just show you the different applications that I use and basically where to get them all right and then the next video will specifically talk about um, once you've created a model um, it's not a tutorial how to use and I use blender by the way uh, it's so this tutorial is not how to use blender there are tons of experts out there that have uh, great videos on how to use blender but we'll go into blender do a small thing and show you how to export it and then get it into Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's start talking about those resources. The number one resource that you obviously are going to want to get other than Microsoft Flight Simulator is Blender. Okay. Um, yeah. Let <coughs> let me bring these up okay so this is blender.org uh, blender is 3d software it's free it's open source and it's probably overtaking the 3d modeling world um, other other sources is is uh, Maya um, uh, Gmax what do they call that now um, 3ds studio uh, those are all payware but blender is free and it will always be free so you go to blender.org and you basically download the most current uh, current copy of that all right like I said it's not a tutorial how to use blender but you got to get that far anyway so if you want to use blender it's free now once you have blender you also need to uh, get an add-on. Let me see where I have that right here. You need to get an you need to get an add-on called Blender to MSFS. All right, it's a toolkit. It's open source. It's open source or not open source. Open source means that you can you can help contribute code and things to the software but it's a free add-on for blender so you get that product by going to fsdeveloper.com matter of fact here is the link right here okay uh, and if you follow that link you'll see the banner for blender 2 msfs fs toolkit okay the current version is uh, 0.40.0 and then you just hit the download button and download that to your machine. Um, if you follow this thread in FS Developer, it will also tell you how to install it. But basically you install it somewhere or download it somewhere onto your, your hard drive and then use Blender to um, open that up or uh, enable it for use, okay? So, so the two best tools for your models, Blender 
and then the Blender 2 MSFS add-on okay and basically what that add-on does is it enhances the export of your GTLF files okay and that is the file format uh, that you export your blender file to okay and then then that's what MS uh, that's what Microsoft Flight Simulator uses is the GTLF all right uh, 2.0 so the add-on um, takes care of a lot of the work that you do uh, during the export product uh, process <coughs> okay now you're going to need some kind of graphic software uh, such like uh, Photoshop this is where you can create your own textures and and you know signs and and ground markings that kind of environment that you can put into your airports or on you know put them on your aircraft or whatever you're doing okay however Photoshop is expensive all right and there are two alternatives one is very famous and one is hardly even known about okay uh, the one that's famous is GIMP, all right? So you can go to GIMP.org and download GIMP, and you can try to get familiar and, and use GIMP as your, as your uh, graphics software. Um, I never really got into GIMP all that much. I use it primarily for image uh, transformation uh, or exporting into some other format. Um, or when I do screen prints in Flight Simulator or stuff, I usually uh, export them to PNG files using GIMP, okay? Just quick and dirty kind of stuff. But when I want to use software that I can do my layering of all the different uh, layers for textures and things like that, I use uh, software that's pretty much almost unheard heard of and I don't know why it is amongst the uh, flight simulator world okay and that product is called uh, Krita okay Krita is a Photoshop clone I mean it uh, it's amazing what you can uh, anything you can do in Photoshop you can do with Krita it's the exact same layout almost, okay? Um, but it's open source, it's free. You can download it and use it forever, okay? So if you go to krita.org, okay? And just follow the, follow the prompts to download it, okay? It has a small footprint, doesn't take that much space, um, but it is an extremely extremely helpful tool and you know uh, in my opinion it rivals Photoshop now Photoshop does probably some things that Krita doesn't but uh, for most users Krita is fantastic all right so what I'll do here is first I'll bring up Krita and here's just a simple splash that I'm making for this particular video but it has basically all the tools and brushes and all that kind of stuff like Photoshop has but it doesn't cost you a dime all right so you need blender obviously if you want to use something that's free you need the blender 2 MSFS plugin okay get the most current version um, and for graphic software I like to use Krita okay it's an excellent tool then finally we get into Microsoft Flight Simulator we're all familiar with Flight Simulator okay so you get the opening screen now in order to work in the scenery editor and, and the aircraft editor and all that stuff I'll show you really quick um, at the main screen you're going to go to options and then you're going to go to general options and then 
in the general options, you're going to come down to developers and you're going to make sure that developer mode is turned on. Okay, now I'm a pure scenery creator. Um, really, the only time I fly is when I'm testing my airports and things that I make. Um, I do fly, I used to fly virtual airlines and all that stuff years and years ago, uh, hours and hours of flying, but um, I enjoy doing this the most, creating scenery that I give to others to use. So I'm in development mode all the time. So the one thing you need to understand about developer mode is if you have developer mode on and you're a pilot, you like to fly a lot, but every once in a while you want to do some scenery stuff. If you leave developer mode on, the hours that you fly do not get written to your logbook. Just understand that. So if you want to develop and fly and you want to keep a clean logbook because I know many of you cre uh, keep a logbook religiously okay um, just make sure what before you fly to turn this turn this uh, developer mode off that way your flying hours will get written to your log okay um, like I said I'm in developer mode 100% of the time okay so I don't I don't care about my log anymore, yeah, so to speak. All right, so those are the basic tools for, um, for doing this uh, flight simulator scenery and modifications thing, okay? Um, so you need good 3D software, which I uh, go to Blender. Uh, you need an add-on called Blender to MSFS in order to take advantage of all the conversions and stuff that Microsoft Flight Simulator needs. You're also going to need some good graphic software like a Photoshop, but Photoshop costs you money, uh, but Krita does not. Okay, so I use Krita, love it, it's awesome, and there's a huge community to watch videos on how to use Krita, all right? Um, YouTube videos on using it all over the place. It's community driven, just like Blender. Um, now, some of my favorite uh, tutors for different software, Blender Guru for Blender, um, or Blender Bob for Blender. Uh, for um, Krita, there's just so many individuals that do it. Um, they're all over the place, but you can find them. Uh, for Flight Simulator SDK work, which I'll show you later on in another, another video, um, some of my favorites are um, Flying Thestin, awesome series on how to use the SDK when it was first developed. He hasn't come out with new stuff with the new menus and stuff that we have now. Uh, also, um, Benny Boy 444. Uh, he has some older videos that kind of get you the idea. And then um, uh, Full Moon Party videos. Okay, um, he Mark does a great job. Mark has created Gatwick Airport, and I think almost everybody in the community knows that that's probably the best freeware airport you can buy, um, <laughs> that you can buy, that you can get. Uh, um, but Mark does a great job, and his videos are informative on some of the other uh, more technical issues of, of using the SDK. Um, and hopefully this video will get you started. So go get those resources, get them downloaded, get them installed on your computer, and we will see you on the next video.